we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, and I know we'll just admit people as, as we continue the program today. Uh, my name is Shali Katana, and I'm the Director of Member Experience and Programs here at the MSBA. And we are really excited to connect with law students, recent grads, and with some of our current members um, and staff today in our Coffee Talk series, which um, we're now, I think, into the teens for how many of these that we've done. And we started these as a way to connect with our members and different sections of the MSBA. And we now um, decided to expand it and reach out to the law schools. Um, and we're really glad to see that you all have joined us today. And we will be recording this um, and we'll, we'll have it posted and feel free to share it. Um, and we hope to continue these over the next couple of weeks and months just to check in with you. Uh, today, we will start by just giving background on the MSBA and what we've been doing during this COVID period. And then we will open it up for discussion. We have some uh, chairs and past chairs and current members of the MSBA to help engage in our discussion. Uh, and then we'll open it up to a virtual networking uh, with our partner Treble. So we hope a lot of you can stay on for that as it's another great opportunity and a great tool that we have as part of our um, membership with, with everyone here at MSBA. Um, and we have a chat function here in Zoom. I know a lot of us have done many, many Zoom calls, but feel free to post in there as you have any questions or any thoughts. Um, and Angela will be monitoring that for me. So we here at MSBA have been very busy and active. Um, as soon as the COVID crisis began, we were thankful to have such a rapid response from our members and from the legal community. Uh, and we're able to stay very connected to the thousands of you that have stayed with us and um, come to our webinars, town halls and virtual meetings and just engaging in the content and the community that we've been putting out there. And we have worked hard to stay connected with the judiciary, both Maryland and federal, um, sharing questions and concerns on behalf of the profession uh, to just get quick answers, to get clarification. And that's also expanded to the governor's office and the Office of Legal Counsel. Um, and we've shared those as much as we can in real time with all of you. And we're really thankful to the sections that have also helped in framing these concerns and questions. Uh, we participate in biweekly calls with a lot of the local law firms um, in talking about their COVID response, and that's helping us, again, to reach out to our membership and to you all as law students to kind of understand what the legal landscape is like right now. Uh, we're also working with the Maryland Chamber of Commerce um, as a partner on a COVID work group. And I'll turn now to Richard Montgomery, who is our uh, legislative director, to talk some more about some of these efforts. Richard? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Richard Montgomery. As Shelley mentioned, I serve as MSBA legislative director. Uh, principally, what that means for the most part is that I serve as the point person for MSBA on legislation at principally the state level, but also federal legislation and to some degree local legislation. Uh, that also extends to court rule, um, court rule making and uh, monitoring the activities of the Court of Appeals Rules Committee. Um, but to get to what we were, what we've been doing since the COVID uh, pandemic struck, uh, Shelley mentioned that you know basically this has changed the way everyone looks at life. You know, from the morning the moment they get up, and affected all of our livelihoods and the way we look at the world and work. Um, a number of emergency measures that, that really needed to be enacted because the General Assembly cannot come back uh, due to the pandemic to enact new legislation. Much of uh, the things that would ordinarily be before the General Assembly have been accomplished via executive order by the governor and by administrative office, excuse me, administrative orders by the chief judge. Uh, we've been involved with a number of executive orders uh, with the governor's office of legal counsel and I won't go into the details of those but Shelley also mentioned uh, our partnership with the Maryland Chamber of Commerce and the COVID-19 work group 
Uh, a lot of that early on dealt with sort of trying to synthesize what was going on with small business administration assistance programs. Uh, now it's turned more toward what, is, what do the governor's orders mean when the governor says, okay, this is phase one reopening. Uh, what are the ramifications of that? Uh, things like can the local jurisdictions maintain uh, regulations and rules that are more stringent than the governor's order? The answer to that is yes, which unfortunately creates a lot of confusion for many businesses and for uh, many government offices as well. Uh, but that, in a nutshell, has been sort of what's been going on since March. Uh, Shelley? Thanks, Richard. We launched our COVID website as soon as the pandemic began, um, and we've been updating that with what's been going on with the courts, with businesses, um, and resources to help your practice. We also have many uh, wellness tools and resources there and information from our partner, the Access to Justice Program. Um, I'll turn now to Anna Scholl, who is the Deputy Executive Director, to give some further updates on what we've been working on. Anna? Thanks, Shelley. So I think uh, one of our goals here is just to make sure that um, Maryland practitioners just have the resources that they needed. As Shelley mentioned, we had the COVID uh, website, uh, which had a variety of content, including, um, you know, how to uh, remote work, how to transition your practice from in-person to remote work, uh, as well as just emerging issues that were coming up, um, PPP loans, which were big for a lot of our large firms. Uh, we've had countless webinars, which I'll hear, I'm sure you'll hear more about from Andrea Terry, our director of CLE. And our mm -hmm. most recent content was our reopening guidelines. So this is a, uh, a resource for, as we kind of rethink about what it's gonna look like to come back to the office, uh, this provides a lot of firms of any size some guidance on some of the policies that they should be instituting. Uh, so that's largely what we've been working on and just making sure that firms and, and attorneys around uh, Maryland are feeling supported during this time. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Shelley. And we've also um, increased, as Anna said, our communications. And so we used to have once a week that we would update our members and the community. And now we've increased that twice a week with um, updates from the courts and also original content um, from us about what's been going on in the community. We recently released a digital version of our bar journal um, and that's free and available to the entire community at this time as another resource. Um, and we've also been promoting our CLE content uh, free of charge again available to the entire profession and, and to all of you. Um, I'll let Andrea Terry now, who is our Director of Learning, speak to some of these additional resources, um, as well as our publications. Thanks, Andrea. Sure. Thanks, Shelley. Uh, as Shelley mentioned, um, during the, um, from the onset of the pandemic, really, uh, I think a lot of practice areas, a lot of lawyers uh, started to realize um, there were impacts uh, on their practices that had just been completely and it unanticipated, uh, not the least of which was how to handle uh, a caseload and, and clients remotely. Uh, so we have done uh, 30 plus webinars now and uh, addressing everything from um, the CARES Act and the PPP loans that were so important to, to many small mid-size uh, firms and uh, how to administer those, uh, tax implications for those, how they affect bankruptcies, um, and so it really became critical to provide information to lawyers about managing their practice as, a, as well as uh, managing their clients' uh, legal problems that arose because of the pandemic. So between attending the live webinars that we've done and, and consuming some of the on-demand that we've made available on the COVID website that Charlie met, mentioned, we've had uh, 17,000 uh, Maryland lawyers uh, pay it, you know, um, dial in for information and connection really. Um, a lot of uh, folks who participated in our webinars were there for information but also connection to find out uh, what other practitioners were doing. So I think we played a really important role uh, from a very early point in the pandemic um, for the legal community. Um, as far as uh, the free CLE that, that Shally mentioned, until the end of this month, starting in early April, we opened up our entire catalog to um, members and non-members uh, who were gonna be seeking information and, and had the time 
to consume it now. Um, and so we were happy to do that. And it also uh, uh, gave a lot of lawyers the opportunity to explore practice areas that maybe uh, they didn't have time to look at in, in the past. Um, so that's an offer that, uh, that we were happy to make available uh, to members and non-members. Thanks, Andrea. Mm -hmm. Anna, could I turn back to you to talk a little bit about some of these um, practice areas that law students can explore? Sure. So this, these um, bundles actually came out of a conversation that I had with Zena Billion at University of Maryland. I believe she's on the call. Um, so we know that the law students have um, a lot more free time over the summer. So as Andrea mentioned, um, the, the the entire um, catalog is available through the end of the month, June 30th, but we've extended some additional programs uh, for law students specifically that are listed here that we think might be helpful um, in a variety of practice areas, uh, as well as our Solo Summit Star Trek, which is really the a day long kind of guide to how to kind of hang out your own shingle or go into your own practice if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, so these programs are actually available through the end of August, and they do have a, a different uh, coupon code, which is labeled here on the slide. So if you're interested in these particular um, programs, these are available to uh, you now through our existing kind of um, all access catalog and will remain available to you through the end of August uh, through the coupon code that you see on the screen. So uh, feel free to take advantage of these. If there's something in the coupon, um, in the catalog that you are super interested in and didn't get a chance to view by the 30th, you know, please reach out to us and we can see if we can make one-time exceptions, but uh, we are generally making uh, some of this catalog available for the rest of the summer so you can kind of continue to enhance your career, add this to your resume to stay busy uh, as you're trying to explore how to get uh, more practical uh, skills under your belt. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Anna. I'm going to turn now to Angela Monroe, who is our section liaison, to give a little bit of background about student memberships and opportunities. Thanks, Shelley. Um, so the MSB is also offering free membership to all students while you're in law school. You also will receive free membership for a year after you pass the Maryland bar. Um, and with this membership, you will receive um, access to the Young Lawyers section, along with three other sections, which is on the, which are on the slides. Um, we really want to encourage sec students to become active in these sections by attending programs, meetings, um, or by joining the councils. Um, we do have the Young Lawyers section chair, Liz Rosen, as well as the past chair, Michael Hudak. Um, you'll, hear, you'll hear from them shortly about their experience. Thanks, Angela. Anna, could I turn back to you to also give us an update about um, our canceled summer annual meeting and what we have planned for the fall? Sure can. So unfortunately, the traditional annual meeting um, has been canceled this year. It would have occurred uh, actually two weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. It was really sad because the weather was fantastic. Um, and we had two great speakers lined up with Madeline Albright, former Secretary of State, and Nina Totenberg, uh, NPR legal analyst. Uh, so th that is canceled. The good news is Madeline Albright will be appearing at a fall event of ours, so stay tuned for information at that. And Nina Totenberg will be appearing at our 2021 event, which hopefully um, by summer 2021 we'll be able to move forward with that event as we traditionally have. Uh, meanwhile, the remainder of the content, we had over 80 pro programs and a variety of practice areas that were scheduled to be presented at that event. Uh, so we have broken uh, a large majority of those up, uh, about 40 or so of those programs will be presented as uh, single hour live streams called our Legal Summit Series. So you'll start to see some advertising for that. So to the extent that you're interested, uh, those are available. Uh, and those are available at a, a relatively uh, great price of $29 uh, per hour, which is a really great uh, price for a CLE. And so um, accredited CLE, to the extent that you are uh, thinking about getting barred anywhere else, that's something to start thinking about uh, as to how you acquire CLE. So um, they have really great topics. A lot of the topics are cutting edge, uh, as many of our programs at the annual meeting are about emerging issues and kind of developing issues. So uh, stay tuned for information on those as that comes out. I'll turn to Lisa Kaplan now, the director of our Lawyer Assistance Program, to provide program updates. Thanks, Shelley. 
Health and wellness is really important during these really difficult times. So we have a lot of different resources. We have the health and wellness COVID page, which has a lot of different information on it, has the tip of the day, it has hotline information, there are webinars on there, there are tip sheets on there, non-traditional stress management exercises that are on there, TED Talks, basically anything that is health and wellness is on there. Try to keep it pretty short, but you can find a lot of different resources on there. Also, the Lawyer Assistance Program is a really good resource for law school students. It's a free confidential counseling program. It's for lawyers, judges, and law school students. It is available all over the state. We have counselors that are everywhere. So if you are in right now Southern Maryland, we have counselors there that can see you. So you don't have to come to Baltimore City. It is free, it is confidential. It's a great program for any type of personal issues, whether it's stress or financial issues, family issues, or you just wanna work on wellness, you can give me a call and we can go ahead and get started on that. Also, if you're ever concerned about a uh, another lawyer or law school student, you can always reach out to me. It's completely confidential. It's completely anonymous, but you can tell me what's going on and we can see and make sure that person is safe. When you are a barred attorney, you have access to financial assistance for mental health and substance abuse. So if you are in counseling and having a hard time paying for that, that is something that we can help you to pay for. As far as the law schools, I'm in the law schools all the time during presentations. I professionalism classes, clinic classes, externship classes, wellness programs, you name it, I'm pretty much in the law schools. I've created something called office hours, which hopefully we'll be able to do once we can get up and move around again. At University of Maryland, I had office hours where I would come in and do short sessions and people could sign up and come meet with me. So there's lots and lots of different resources. If you ever want to do something on wellness, you can feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to your professors and I'm happy to come in and talk with your classes. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. The MSBA is also really proud to partner with the Access to Justice Commission. Um, and we are thankful to have the executive director of that organization, Rena Shah, on the phone uh, in this meeting. Rena, can you give us an update about your program? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Rena. Uh, so we are one very um, uh, excited and uh, happy and uh, thankful for our partnership with the Maryland State Bar Association. We entered this partnership about uh, almost two years ago now. Um, and uh, since, you know, the COVID pandemic hit, um, this partnership has been really important to elevate um, and raise the important issues um, there's been a lot of people, obviously, um, the access to justice crisis in a nutshell is that there are many people who have to navigate the civil justice system on their own. Um, and there are many issues that have been raised by uh, COVID-19, um, including, you know, people who may not have access to technology, may not be able to participate in remote hearings or other, um, you know, uh, ways of participating. In addition, um, just substantively, uh, you may be reading in the papers about the, the looming crisis in evictions and consumer debt and many other civil justice issues. Um, most recently, the commission has uh, launched uh, with uh, the Maryland uh, Attorney General uh, a partnership about, um, sorry, it's a task force uh, that is, uh, you know, dedicated to exploring these issues, um, the civil justice issues that were uh, created or exacerbated by the COVID pandemic. Um, currently, I think there's a few of our students uh, on this call, hopefully, but we were able to bring in students and engage um, in this particular effort um, we have about five students from the University of Maryland and three, four students from the University of Baltimore uh, that have come on to support the work of the task force uh, through something called the COVID A2J Core. Um, so they've hit the ground running since last week uh, to help support the work of the task force. We will have 10 committees um, that are working on different substantive areas. Um, and the duration of the task force's work will be from now until December. They are going to be working on short-term 
uh, reform and innovation uh, efforts, uh, thinking of ways that they can, um, you know, input suggestions, create programs, uh, public information campaigns, et cetera, uh, to help uh, with, the, uh, with the issues that are on the ground. And then also think of some long-term um, reforms uh, and efforts uh, that they could bring to the legislature come next uh, legislative session in uh, January. Um, so that is the work of the commission. We always uh, encourage folks to get involved in these issues and um, you can go to our website we have a COVID, COVID resource page there you can find more information on the commission and also ways to get involved and get on our um, mailing list as well thank you so much Rena so we know it's a lot of information that we're we're sharing with you all um, and we certainly don't expect you to know all the ins and outs of our organization and what we're offering but we just wanted to provide this as background for some of the work that we've been doing um, and for what we're planning in the coming months and, and years ahead. Um, and we certainly would love for all of you to join us. Um, as Angela talked about the student membership, you know, it's very easy to join. And if you have any questions, you know, please contact our member services team. Um, we are in our renewal season right now. So we're, we're eager and, and willing and ready to get you all connected and to stay connected in all of these opportunities. Um, you can also feel free to reach out to any of us here on staff individually. Um, we are working in a, in a remote capacity and we have been since March. Um, and our, our goal and our mission is to continue to serve the legal community and students. And, uh, and we really hope that you can join us. Uh, we also have a feedback uh, email where we would encourage you if you have any um, ideas, any questions, you can also just reach out to us at that email address as well. And I'll turn to Angela now to give us a little bit more information about our MSBA Student Ambassador Program. And I know we do have some of our amb ambassadors here on the call as well. Thanks, Shelley. So we, we started the Student Ambassador Program two years ago. We had two students from UB. Um, they attended various MSBA events, section meetings. They planned a Taco Tuesday social event on campus. And they also attended the annual meeting in Ocean City. Um, this year's student ambassadors are Candace Miller and Pernita Farr from UB and Margaret OAJ from Charleston School of Law. They began in January and they'll be working with us until next December. Um, they're all on this call, so we're going to throw it to them to share their experience so far with us. So we'll start with Candace. Hi everyone, I hope all of you are doing well right now. Um, I'm Candace Miller. I was already sort of involved within the MSBA and YLS before becoming an ambassador. Um, but since being an ambassador, I've had a different experience than I had before because of COVID. So before COVID happened, uh, Pernita and I were working on building on a Taco Tuesday to make that our staple event of the year since other organizations don't do that. Um, because we want it to be consistent. I think if there's consistency each year and there's an event that students look forward to, um, it creates more of a buzz and then people know our name and know what MSBA does and how to get involved. Um, but when COVID happened, we weren't able to do any events on campus. So we paired with Access to Justice and we've been working on um, getting information out to the public. I uh, had an opportunity to create an entire page dedicated to tax law, which was really cool because um, that's sort of an interest of mine is tax and that wasn't something that was included yet. Um, so it gave me an opportunity to grow and research and learn more about a different area of law. And since then, we've been trying to create virtual events like today and get that out to students. So thanks. Margaret, do you want to go next? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Margaret Awoje, and I currently attend the Charleston School of Law in Charleston, South Carolina. However, I am a native of Maryland, um, and I do plan on returning back home. Um, I became a student ambassador um, this year. Um, of course, COVID did change a lot of our 
um, plans <laughs> that we had planned for. Um, however, that did um, really put a um, damper. Um, it's been great um, to virtually eat meet um, the other um, student ambassadors and such. And, and um, currently I am um, working on creating a manual for um, future um, attorneys on how they can become licensed in the state of Maryland, um, ensuring that they're um, maintaining their compliance and the things that are needed that we um, may not necessarily have known before um, becoming an attorney, as well as um, reaching out to um, students at my school and um, other law schools such as um, USC that are currently out there that are looking to come up to Maryland um, that are interested in taking the bar here in Maryland and showing that, that there is this um, bar association and trying to get them involved early on. And we have uh, Bernita on. Yes. Uh, hi everyone. So um, I pretty much can mimic um, the sentiments of the other two ambassadors. So yes, we um, were excited to start the, with the program this year in creating uh, and making um, fine tuning an annual version of the uh, Taco Tuesday. Um, but again, because of COVID, we didn't get a chance to do that. Um, but we, you know, in light of in light of the things we couldn't do, um, it was very it was it was very helpful to um, be connected with Access to Justice. Um, we, as Candace said, we did a lot of camp. Um, I guess not campaigning, but um, helping to uh, add visibility in different social media platforms. And so that came with an opportunity to learn some different technologies that um, I personally didn't already have, some technology skills. So, and it was also good to see and get to um, be involved with the different members of the legal community um, that, you know, outside of MSBA and Access to Justice, um, I may not have as a law student been able to kind of um, experience. And so just sharing sharing some of the resources that are, avail are available have been pretty much um, the text of, you know, that Candace and I have been doing some on our personal student page. Um, that's, you know, not necessarily the school's page, but the students have their own social media page. Um, as well as I did get an opportunity early on this year to write and submit an article um, to the MSBA and really I was just, um, it was addressed to the idea that COVID has possibly um, become the catalyst for online or hybrid law school, which, you know, law school is the last of the industries to kind of um, uh, join that, <laughs> join that wagon. So we'll see if that, you know, what happens in the future, but I think that there are some, there were some lessons that came out of COVID um, working with MSBA that has really helped to kind of shape either, you know, my personal legal future and also how getting um, getting involved early can be really, really helpful in shaping your career and also um, networking with your peers. Thank you all so much for, for sharing your thoughts and your experience so far. Um, I'm hopeful that in our next call, there'll be even more to share. Um, and, you know, as always, you know, Angela's done a great job um, along with Doris Barnes at just at keeping you all connected. Um, I wanted everyone, if, if you are in Zoom, if you can kind of go to the grid view, it makes this experience, I think, much better. I stopped sharing my screen so we can all see each other or we can, we can see names. Um, and I know a lot of people are muted while we were presenting, but I encourage people to unmute and feel free to post anything um, in the chat. And many thanks to um, representatives from the law school that have, have joined us and are, are on the call today. It's so important to stay, you know, connected with all of you and in touch with what's going on on the ground or via Zoom with your students. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to introduce now um, several current members that we have on here. Um, and I'll just go through the names first so that you can get oriented. And then I just open it up to them to, to kind of do introductions and maybe a little bit about um, their involvement in MSBA and, and kind of staying in this network. So we have Michael Hudak um, and we have Nate Rich. Is Nate on yet? Oh, Nate's not on. Not on yet. 
He's but he'll make a wonderful appearance very soon. Um, and Liz Rosen, and they are all, you know, past and, and currently involved with the leadership of the Young Lawyers section. Um, we also have Lisa, so if y'all want to give a wave so we can uh, see you. We have Lisa Sparks, who's uh, heading up the leadership for the construction law section. Um, and then we have George Hermina, who is a board member and um, the past director of the um, Howard County Bar Association. So, you know, lots of great folks here. And I wonder if I can turn to Liz and Michael to talk a little bit about um, YLS and, and your experience. Liz is the, going to be the, well, Liz, I guess is the chair right now. So let her go first. Thank you, Michael. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Liz Rosen. I'm our current chair for the Young Lawyers section. And um, I know it's a very difficult time to be a law student. Just a ton of uncertainty out there. I actually do our hiring for our law student interns uh, in the summer. You know, it's a particular time that my office has more interns than usual. And, you know, we've just been struggling to kind of figure out what to do to try and give them some experience. While all of this is going on, I know some of the students that I mentor have had their internships canceled. It's very frustrating, um, but the good news is, is that you guys are here. You're in a space right now with other people from the MSBA who um, are movers and shakers like you. You wouldn't be on this call if you didn't care about the profession, about your future in it. Um, I think Shally has done a really good job about telling you the resources that are available to you. There are so many, so many free CLEs happening right now that can be a huge benefit to you. Uh, not even necessarily towards getting a job after law school, but just towards preparing for your classes next semester. Um, you know, this is going to be an environment that I think we're going to see more of. Uh, and so, you know, getting used to learning online could be something very big. The young lawyer section is obviously full of young lawyers. And, uh, you know, we've been meeting through Zoom, trying to figure out how we can best serve our constituency going forward. There's a moratorium on in-person meetings until I think at least September through the state bar. So keep an eye out. We're going to be putting on some really great programming um, that is geared towards young lawyers. So, you know, we do want to hear from you as well. Uh, Mike Kudak was a past chair, I think about three or four years ago now, and he's still clearly very involved in with, with the section, as are some of the leaders of the other sections outside of young lawyers. They like to be in touch with young lawyers, you know, with the future of this profession, so they want to hear from us. Um, and we, in turn, you know, want to hear from you. I got started being a section member on section council and young lawyers, and here I am four years later. So definitely a good use, I feel, of my time and my energy and effort, made some really good connections friendships. There are people that I hang out with outside of doing anything law related as well, but hang in there. We're thinking of you. We're, we're going through it too, but just be strong and, you know, hopefully in the next six months we can get back to seeing each other in person. Mike? Good afternoon, everyone. And my name is Michael Hudak. I'm a past chair of the Young Lawyers section. Um, I think that was three or four years ago, as Liz said. I've been practicing for a little over a decade. I'm an assistant state's attorney in Baltimore City, the major investigations unit. Um, and I've been on the uh, Board of Governors. I'm coming off now though, and that's the governing board for the State Bar for about five years. So I've um, been very involved with the State Bar for the past decade um, and numerous amounts of roles, um, most in depth through the Young Lawyers section and echo everything that Liz just said. Um, it's a great way to get involved. Um, I've done a lot of work with the um, law schools as Liz has the past few years as well. So um, I don't know if there's a way here, I'll defer to maybe Angela or um, someone else to get our information, but I always like to give my uh, email address or contact information out to anyone that is willing to join this. So um, I'm always open, free, feel free to um, send an email. Um, used to do coffee a lot during the afternoons, but I don't, <laughs> I guess that's a work in progress, but I'm always willing to um, you know, answer a question. And I know that's very, especially helpful for everyone in law school. That's probably the, um, one of the bigger helps you can do is be a mentor to somebody, at least in, even in a small role. So, um, uh, that's my introduction. Hello, everyone. Thank you. And I see that Nate has just joined us. Hi, Nate. How are you? I'm well. How's everybody doing? Sorry for being a few minutes late. I, uh, my wife is leading the litigation section annual meeting right now, and my six-year-old and four-year-old had their first day of camp, uh, which Hi. is the neighborhood kids run by the currently unemployed neighborhood counselors to let parents work. And it's working out all right. So everyone survived the first pool day. Happy well, to be here. Thanks for joining us. And, you know, we've just given a little bit of background about what the MSBA has been up to. And we just heard from 
uh, Mike and Liz a, a little bit about YLS and you know encouraging people to stay connected, do some free CLEs. Do you think you could mm -hmm. just give a little bit of an update and um, you know just a, a little bit of guidance to this group about you know what you're thinking in terms of where they are right now and, and some words of encouragement? Well, I, I think words of encouragement are the most important thing. And the fact is, like everybody else, we will, you all will get through this. You're unfortunately in that terrible position now where you're going to be delayed taking the bar and probably delayed getting your bar results. And hopefully you've got employers that are understanding of that and willing to work with you on that. And, you know, we're all thinking of you. I've got a, someone to be taking the bar and I guess it's October now uh, in my office as well. And uh, I can tell you, it has not been an easy ride for her. So I hope that, you know, my, my thoughts are with you all. But on a much happier note, in a much more positive note, you are entering into a community that has all been thrust into this together. And that the outpouring of support from, uh, we always like to say more seasoned lawyers or ones that have as much or more gray hair than I do, um, for the folks that are, you know, newer to the practice, whether it's, you know, in terms of traditional mentoring that has been done or just in terms of, you know, being there and saying, look, you know, work on this and get all of these together, I think has been, I think has been very strong. I think what this, uh, the silver lining from this crisis is, is you've seen that the legal community can come together, not perfectly, but very strongly to sort of advance the goals of its members. Um, you know, and as a segue, that is something that the MSBA, you know, is constantly working at and, and making better. It's a, it's a resource for not just lawyers, but for law students, for people that have graduated from law school that are taking the bar. Um, I'm sure it's been mentioned that you get a free year and uh, having the opportunity to get involved with not just the networking aspect of, you know, maybe find a, a, a job or to do something else, but perhaps to hone your skills or for wellness and life balance activities. Um, you know, there are lots of opportunities out there. And the, the most important thing, like anything else in life, is you go out and you look for them and, and we'll be happy to take you and embrace. I, I think that's probably what's already been said by the folks that went before me. And even though I could ramble on for quite a bit longer, I'll pass it back. Thanks, Nate. Uh, Lisa, I see that you're on the call as well. Um, and as I said, Lisa is chair of the construction law section. Um, could you speak a little bit about sort of sections in the MSBA and, uh, and any other ideas for this group here? Sure. So I uh, just wrapped up a year as chair of the construction law section. And I've been involved with the council of that section for about five years before I uh, became chair. And I'm actually the incoming chair just elected of the legal education and admissions section. So I'm kind of working all the sections. Uh, I will say that I did not get that involved with uh, young lawyers, um, and that wasn't on purpose. It just just didn't happen, and I regret that a bit. I think it would have been a lot easier for me to be the chair of a substantive law section if I had had some more experience, uh, perhaps in a leadership role uh, like Liz is currently in, um, or like you heard from, from Mike and from Nate. So I do encourage the use of the young leader section as a springboard into some of the more substantive law sections. Uh, but I've definitely found uh, being one of the younger members of the construction law section throughout. Uh, actually, I think I've been the youngest member the whole time I've been on the council and then as chair. Um, it's really an incredible way to build relationships deeper in the bar in your practice area and get to know folks that uh, practice maybe opposing you if you're in a litigation role, maybe adjacent to you. I know in our construction law section, we bring together a lot of different practitioners that are transactional and litigation oriented, um, some government, some private practice, some in-house. It's a really nice mix of people uh, that I would not find anywhere else. And it's been a wonderful bonding experience. Uh, every month when we get together for our meetings, we, we do have an agenda and we have business, but we also, talk a little bit of shop and, and compare notes, uh, but the relationships that I've built with some of those individuals that enable me to reach out and ask, hey, do you have a document that I could borrow? Or, you know, you, you wind up opposing somebody and, um, you know, it's a lot easier to make those phone calls, particularly as a younger lawyer to ask for extensions or courtesies uh, when it's someone that you've met in the more social environment of a bar exam section. Thanks so much, Lisa. And I know we do have uh, a number of law students here on the call and recent grads. 
And we really do want to make this a conversation. I don't know if you can hear, but there's a lot of thunder and lightning going on in the background. So apologies if my Zoom starts acting up. Um, but I really wanted to open this up to all of you now. And you know, I know we're all doing a lot of different things. So feel free to unmute, show yourself if you, if you like, and um, feel free to ask questions or just stay engaged here. Um, love to hear from any or all of you. And I know, Anna, that we have uh, two of our own interns that are here on the call. Um, Zoe and Will. Um, and so I just encourage any of you all to speak up, um, ask any questions, um, provide any updates on how you're doing, just check in. It would be great to hear from any of you. And I think while we're waiting, Nate, if I could go back to, I don't want to cut anyone off, so feel free anyone to jump in. But, you know, Nate, you were talking about staying positive um, and just sort of keeping your eye on the prize to get through this for a lot of students and recent grads. Uh, can you talk about some kind of networking ideas or uh, skills that were successful for you when you were in their position kind of starting off? And then maybe some ideas for what might be different or new now that we're in a COVID world. <laughs> well, unfortunately, everything is a little different and new right now because um, it is a type of situation where when, if this had happened when I was entering the bar, I'm pretty sure the world would have just set on fire and everyone would have moved on and start over. Um, where we are today with Zoom, with Google Meet, with the flexibility of the courts and practitioners, and even as many of us Luddites struggle through and try to figure it out, um, it, it allows for opportunities to get together in situations like this, or if this had happened, you know, 13, 14 years ago, 12 years ago, it would have been a absolute, it would have been a show. We'll just leave it at that. So what I would encourage folks to do is, and, you know, I know some familiar faces out there, Candace, uh, how you doing? Um, sorry, I've only got a few things on this. I've got a smaller screen, but there are going to be, online events where you're going to have the ability to have small group interactions with other lawyers, not just with the state bar association, but also with your local bar association. And those are really opportunities that you should not pass up. Um, if you're fortunate enough, you've got a job already, you know, getting in and trying to learn how to actually do that job is going to be, you know, priority number one. But getting involved with the bar associations will help you make that easier. Now, I know that Liz, and she just had to jump off, has already started working on what next year is going to look like. You know, typically we do a kickoff happy hour, we do a big networking event, we do a couple of different things right as the year gets started uh, after Labor Day. Um, and this year it's going to be different because we're probably going to be in this setting. Um, you know, hopefully we get out of it, you know, sooner rather than later, but, you know, Lord only knows. So, Find something that you're looking for, not just membership wise, but also in terms of if, you know, wellness is your thing. If you've got an interest in doing pro bono or public service work, these are opportunities that the young lawyer section um, provides. And while it may not be hands on stuff right away, you can get that introduction and that base. Um, I know that uh, the various other, you know, in terms of pro bono resources, the various partner entities within the MSBA also provide opportunities and seminars. Um, free legal training, even in some circumstances, if you're willing to go out and do some pro bono services. Uh, PBRC is a tremendous library where if you're sort of picking up speed and have some time on your hands and you're looking to do a new area of law, it's something you can go out and do. And doing that type of stuff also allows you to um, meet lawyers. And look, we all hope that we get out of law school, we find that perfect job, and we're set for life. And I think if you took a handful of 100 lawyers in a room, very few hands would go up in terms of having found that. Mike Hudak's lucky, he's one of them. But uh, the, uh, you know, I'm, you know, many people jump around and try different things. And what the networking does is it allows you maybe not to find that first job, but to get that second job, that third job, that dream job once you've got your feet wet. So I know I just sort of talk a lot, so anyone feel free to raise their hand or interject, but. Uh, it's a good thing to get involved. <laughs> Lisa. Sorry, I had a hard time unmuting myself. Um, Thanks, Nate. Nate. I just want to add to what you said. Um, there's this, this dream and this expectation that you're going to find the perfect job right out of law school. Um, 
And I think everybody has that. And I know that I struggled starting my career at the end of my clerkship in 2008 when there were zero jobs to go around. Uh, and in my decade or so teaching at UB Law School, I've told innumerable students, your first job doesn't have to be your forever job, right? There are lots of great jobs out there that will get you good experience and a good network and build skills and substantive knowledge. And after a couple of years, you can move on. Um, and I think that the more flexible and open-minded young lawyers are right now about new and different opportunities, the better off they'll be. Um, a very long period of unemployment holding out for that perfect job uh, is probably not as desirable as you know getting in and getting some work experience even in a less than perfect job. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, kind of going outside your comfort zone. And I think um, to Liz's point earlier, you know, look at a CLE that's in a different practice area, right? Take that opportunity to, to look into that and then maybe reach out to a contact. Um, Lisa Kaplan, are you still here? I'm not sure if we still have Lisa anymore. Um, no, but I'm sorry, I'm here. Oh, that's okay. myself. <laughs> Lisa, I know you talked a little bit about what we're offering in terms of wellness tips and you know fit fridays that we're starting but can you speak to to the students and the grads that are on this uh, zoom and who might be viewing this later just about you know what you're seeing you know what you had experienced with the support group that you were leading earlier this year yeah absolutely and i'm having a lot of thunder in the background and lightning too so i hope i don't all of a sudden lose power but um we did a support group that ran um started in march and then went through the end of may and just saw a lot of different uh, feelings. I think um, what I'm seeing now is what some people have coined the COVID meltdown, where you kind of have a rush of feelings, not knowing exactly where they're coming from, but anything from feeling overwhelmed to just really just kind of feeling out of sorts. And whatever anyone is feeling is really very normal during this time. It is unprecedented. It's a lot of, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of unrest. And it's really important just to really take care of yourself. So I've I've seen that, I've seen, actually I've seen a lot of um, substance use issues or behaviors, uh, unhealthy behaviors that people have been using. I think what's gonna happen is as the time goes on and it settles in a little bit, people are gonna be out of a crisis state and then they're gonna start to have a reaction, which we're gonna see a lot more of the mental health, a lot more of the stress, a lot more um, possibly substance use or behaviors and looking for quick fixes, things like that. So it's just been a variety. Again, this is very new for me, just like it is for you. Nobody has gone through this before. So it's been just very changing times and then add on top of that, the unrest of anything that everything else that's going on. So it's just been a um, constant change. Thanks, Lisa. And something that I'd like to stress is, you know, in looking at what my role here at the MSBA is, is looking at member experience and what I think we thought member experience looked like in, you know, January when I joined the state bar staff here is very different than what we're seeing today in a lot of ways. But I think it's also helped us to really, uh, you know, pinpoint and highlight the things that have always been essential values and really important to the organization and just thinking of different vehicles and different avenues to get that information out there to you. So I know Anna and Andrea spoke earlier, um, the other, the director and exec, uh, deputy director about how we're getting out content. And I just wanted to share that we're going to continue doing that um, in addition to the webinars as we think about ways to help provide you with job skills, interview skills, resume tips, and support, um, we're going to be communicating that out to you and really trying to offer it in a virtual way, but that's still very interactive, where you'll be able to ask a lot of questions and get a lot of good feedback. Um, and as some of the people here, the members here on the call said, you know, they're open to being an informal mentor or a formal mentor. We're happy to facilitate those connections as well. Um, and I, you know, Angela and I can speak to this, that we're happy when we would go out in the community and we would meet people and, you know, a student or a recent grad would say, I have an interest in knowing more about environmental law. Who can I talk to? And then it's just so easy for us to connect with a member who's already very connected to us and very eager to share what their section is doing or what they've got going on in their practice. So, you know, we really want you to know that all of that is available at your fingertips. Please just 
reach out to us. You know, we're, we're not going to know what you need unless you reach out to us. And, you know, there's no, um, there should be no feeling of, am I a part of this? I've not yet taken the bar. You absolutely are. And we want you to know that, especially at this time when we're all physically isolated, and I think the law student experience can be even more so that way, um, you know, if you, if you are in, you know, staying by yourself or something like that. So please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to host these kinds of connections so that we can check in with one another and make sure that we're all well, you know, not just in our attorney or professional life, but really all around. And uh, Angela, do we have any other chats or comments? I just want to make sure I'm uh, capturing and that we're responding to everyone who has any comments. We did have a question. Tina asked about the student ambassador program of when it will start again with applications. We will begin marketing for next year, um, probably around the middle of September, and then applications will be accepting them October 1st. So if anyone is interested, please feel, feel free to reach out to me. Wonderful. Thank you, Angela. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll just pause for a moment here to see if we have any other questions or comments. Um, and as always, like I said, this is not ending any sort of conversation. It's really just the beginning. Um, but I do want to be mindful of people's time. The uh, last part of our discussion here today, I will turn it over to David Gertler uh, from Treble, who's one of our partners here at the bar. And He'll give you a little bit of background about Treble and then for those of us that are able to stay on, lead us through uh, what's a really positive experience. It's a virtual networking where we will go around the room and learn a little bit more about each other. Uh, and I think that what's important to note is that this has been a benefit that we've offered to our members since the end of last year. And um, Treble is providing a premium membership. Um, included with for all MSBA members and we're also going to extend that here to the students and grads that are on the call and it's just a nice different way to be connected and to ask for help for what you need what you're looking for but also to say this is what I can offer to you so David I'll turn it over to you um, and many thanks for everyone who's been able to join if you can stay on um, I would encourage you all to take part in in this session as well great Thanks so much, Shelley. Um, hi, this is David Gertler. Um, let me, you know, I have to leave that here. Um, I'll just take a moment or two to explain what Treble is, and then we're going to dive right in and hopefully have a very interactive, positive experience for folks um, that will allow you to do some virtual online networking. Um, Treble is a business networking platform designed for organizations as well as for individuals, for organizations that are trying to build a more connected community, a more altruistic community where members help each other. We've got lots of great tools for them. And for individuals, attorneys, um, wealth managers, real estate agents, et cetera, you know, people who, any business professional who kind of lives and dies on that introductions and referrals type of business, we've got a tremendous set of tools for you as well. Um, in a moment or two, we're gonna start with Treble's meeting manager. And we designed meeting manager specifically to facilitate both in-person and virtual networking events. And we actually built this last year. So I, I guess we had some forethought, although I, I didn't buy stock in Zoom, so I wasn't really that uh, pressing. Um, nevertheless, what we're going to do is allow each person, let's go with like 45 seconds to introduce themselves. And you'll really answer three questions. I'll go first to show what it's like. I know many of you haven't had a chance to update your profiles in Treble, that's okay. We can have a guest account, you'll see what it's like. Um, you'll answer three questions. What is your background? How can you help others? And what do you need? What are your wishes? And while we're going through that, it's important to take notes, listen actively, right? The real magic will happen after this call, later tonight, later this week, where you reach out and you say, hey, David, you mentioned such and such. I know a person. Or, you know, hey, Shaoli, you said this, and I'd like to introduce you to that person, right? So what we're trying to do is unlock opportunity for you to have a really good reason to talk to somebody and a specific thing to talk about. And that's really the goal. So kind of think of it as you're attending a smorgasbord and you're sampling one of everybody, and then you get a chance later on to follow up with individuals. And the more you help others, the more likely they're going to help you. I mean, helping others is altruistic, makes you feel good inside. We promote that, but it also you tap into this power of reciprocity. 
I've helped a lot of people and I get a lot of people helping me just out of, of uh, a feel of, of, of need, a feel of res uh, need to respond to me. Afterward, after the call, like I said, you know, make sure you follow up with people, take some time to reach out. Uh, if you have any problems on Treble for any reasons, let us know. We've got tutorials. We've got a whole slew of, of links on our YouTube channel that get you anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, how to do the different functions, or we'll be happy to sit with you and explain things as well. So with that, let's just jump right in and I'll share my other screen, which is all queued up and hopefully ready to go. And oh, while I do this, I will also throw into the chat window. I think we've lost a couple people, so forgive me, um, but I'll throw into the chat window. Where did I put that here, chat? Uh, this is the order at which I think we'll end up going. And if there are a few people that are missing, uh, we'll just skip over them, but that's okay. So in Treble, um, I've got my profile queued up first. We'll give everybody 45 seconds. And again, answering three questions. What is your background? How can you help others? And what are you looking for? Generally, the more specific what you're looking for, the better. <clears throat> Don't spend too much time on your background or how you can help others. You want to make sure you balance it. So, you know, 10 or 20 seconds on each of the different topics gives you plenty of time. No further ado, I'll jump in and go first, see how it goes. Hi, I'm David Gertler. I'm CEO and co-founder of Treble. Treble is a business networking platform. I have about 30 years in technology. Uh, I was a crypto mathematician for NSA. Great stories I can't tell people, a few that I can. How I can help others. I was a big time introvert and I had to learn the hard way how to network and push myself through. So I'm always open to helping people learn how to network, provide advice for networking, um, give tips and tricks and you know, pay it forward. I've got a couple of wishes posted. I'll just focus on one or two. We're continuing to look, we're continuing to raise money. So we're looking for angel investors. If you know anybody, please let us know. Also, we're looking to sign up more organizations like the Maryland State Bar Association. So if you're involved in another organization that you think would benefit from us, I would welcome an introduction. And that's, that's how it goes. Uh, so I think the order that I threw out was that we'll go with Candice first. If Candice, if you're still on the line, uh, please unmute. Sorry, I don't have the Treble account set up, but do you want me to just go through that? Yeah, just go through. It'll be a blank screen and just go through it uh, with, with that focus. Uh, when you're ready, just get started. Okay. So I'm Candice Miller. Um, I don't really have a background in the legal world yet because I'm a law student at the University of Baltimore. I'm a third year. Uh, currently, I'm in tax clinic and my interests are in estates and trust and tax. My background in undergrad was philosophy, so I really enjoy um, having philosophical conversations. Um, how can I help others? Well, at least others, meaning other law students or people that are, I guess, at the same uh, level as me, I can help mentor them through school. I can help create connections um, with the legal field, um, which is why I'm an ambassador, so that I can connect them with the MSBA. Uh, and then I forget your last one, which last was, one is, is what you're looking for. How can other people help you? Um, I really, really want to create a network of people. So I'm kind of helping myself by being a part of the MSBA and, um, joining YLS, but, um, I, I guess others can help me by reaching out with any opportunities that are within the tax field or within estates and trust. Um, even if it's just creating a connection and not directly a job or internship or something else. Um, so that's it. Great. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thanks, Candice. Uh, next up, we'll go with Dina. Uh, Dina, when you're ready, let me know. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. All right. I'm Dina Billion. I am Deputy Director of Maryland Francis King Carey School of Law. I am a former practicing lawyer and about 25 years of experience in the legal industry from the recruitment professional development perspective as well as education and career development. So I can help others with job readiness, basically interview prep, application materials, and connecting. What I'd look for from others are is basically helping my students. So mentors and leads, informational interview connections, as well as potential for opportunities for employment. 
great. No, great job. Great job. <laughs> um, next up, I think Nina dropped. So, right, I'm looking at names. Yep. Uh, so let's go with, is Anna available? Yeah, Anna. Hey, Anna. Hey there. Uh, this is Anna Scholl. I'm the Deputy Executive Director at the MSBA. Um, prior to that, I was at Pest and Cats Law in Towson, Maryland as a commercial litigator. Um, how I can help? I obviously have some connections to about 20,000 legal professionals in Maryland um, that I'd happy to introduce you to and get you connected to somebody that might share an interest or, or similar practice area. Can also help connect you to um, CLE or anything uh, content that you might need to be reading. Uh, so happy to help you find that type of information and how uh, you can help me out or things that I'm looking for is I'm always looking for uh, new content for our Maryland Bar Journal uh, and our upcoming learning library that will be launching uh, towards the end of 2020. Awesome. Oh, great job and perfect timing. Uh, Margaret, are you ready? Just don't forget to unmute, Margaret. Okay. Go for it. All right. Um, my name is Marco Wilje, and I am. I have a background um, in business. I'm a current law student. I'm in my 3L year, and um, my undergraduate was um, in business management and business marketing. I went further and uh, received my MBA. Um, pretty much on how. Um, I can help others is utilizing my business background and going more into the areas of intellectual property and um, possibly like technology law or corporate law. Um, and how others can help me is giving me, um, exposing me to the different tools that are out there, resources to be able to help um, my future clients such as creatives and startups. Oh, awesome, awesome. Oh, that's great. Um, Lisa Sparks, you ready? Yes. Uh, my name is Lisa Sparks, and I'm a partner with the law firm of Wright Constable and Skeen here in Baltimore. Uh, I've also uh, been a professor at the University of Baltimore School of Law for almost a decade. Uh, so one of my specialties and what I can lend to others is uh, mentoring, both academically uh, and in uh, early career placement and development after working with students for all of those years. It's something I'm really passionate about. And uh, although I'm not currently teaching at the law school, uh, I really miss my students and I'm happy to engage with them whenever I can. Uh, my practice areas include uh, construction, uh, real estate, business, a little bit of corporate, uh, some intellectual property, and um, how others can help me. Uh, I would love some quality referrals for business clients if there are folks that you can't help out. Business clients, can you be more specific? Uh, privately held businesses in the construction, real estate, or tech industries. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. And again, don't forget everybody, um, specific is great and take notes as you go, because even though you might not see a direct connection now, one day, a week from now, a month from now, you run across somebody who says, Hey, I'm looking for legal advice with construction. And you go, Oh yeah, I met somebody on the call. So don't be afraid to take notes and give some thought to folks. And then uh, like I mentioned earlier, reach out. Next up is going to be Pranita. Pranita, are you ready? Yes. Go for it. Hi, my name is Pranita. I am a 3 law student at University of Baltimore, also um, this year's, one of this year's student ambassadors. Um, my background is in healthcare. Um, my undergraduate is in health, um, public health. My master's is in education with a specialty in instructional technology. So I'm actually a career, a second career student um, I have about 20 years in the healthcare um, industry. So um, how can I help? I think, um, one, I'm always willing to volunteer um, as much as my um, academic schedule mm -hmm. allows, but also I think um, uniquely that I can offer um, diversity in, in a, you know, other than the obvious. Um, I'm also, like I said, a second year career and I have a physical disability. So I think I have perspectives um, as a second year, um, second career student that may lend well to different industries. Um, what I'm looking for is opportunities or internships or mentoring um, in those areas. I think I'm pursuing either estate planning or healthcare law and technology or some version of that. Um, but yeah. Oh, great. Well done. Uh, next up, we'll go with Alyssa. 
Hi, my name is Alyssa Fee. I'm the Assistant Dean of Law Career Development at University of Baltimore School of Law. I've been there two years and prior to coming to UB, I practiced for 27 years. Um, most of that time has been in the area of um, education and disability related um, law. Um, what I can offer others uh, similar to Dina is you know, career development, um, getting students ready for landing that job that they are really wanting to go after, preparing in mock interviews, um, resume reviews, and doing just career counseling in, in terms of talking about what students want to do and how to strategize to get to those goals. Um, also similar to Dina in terms of what I'm looking for is um, particularly when students lost opportunities, um, trying to find uh, opportunities for students, particularly over the summer, and our alumni definitely stepped up. And if anyone is aware of uh, continued opportunities for the summer, please let me know. Thank you. Awesome. Great job. And everybody, I'm sure, has your email or contact information if they are looking for interns, right? Or you can put it in the chat box if not. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Good. Uh, Michael, are you ready? Uh, unmute, Mike. Everyone hear me? Good to go. Yep. All right. Hello, everyone. Michael Hudak, Assistant State's Attorney in Baltimore City. Um, I'm in the Major Investigations Unit. I've been uh, doing this for 10 years. I focus on corruption, violent crime. Um, I uh, also am a Baltimore City guy, born and bred here for my entire life. I've been involved um, with the Bar Association, like I said earlier, about 10 years, Young Lawyers Section Chair on the Board of Governors. Um, I'm here um, being involved. I was asked to you know, participate, but I also love giving back, love helping uh, people, serving as a mentor. Um, and what um, can I offer? I can offer to um, everybody on this call. Um, um, just like Anna said, I mean, I've been involved for, well, she didn't say specific for me, but I've been involved with this bar association for 10 years, but um, I'm a very uh, social butterfly. I can offer several connections in various legal fields. Um, anything from personally for me, trial advocacy, that's my specialty. I do jury trials, but if it's just connecting you to kind of what Anna was saying earlier to anybody in the legal field, I, I know a lot of people in the different fields all throughout the state of Maryland, and that is because of the Bar Association. So I can go on and on, but I'm not going to because I think I've, my time's expired, but it's nice to again meet everybody and um, hope you can get my contact information through um, somebody on this call. Great. Oh, and again, Michael, uh, feel free in the text chat. You can put your information there and other people can grab it from you. And uh, of course, again, um, feel free to update your profiles in Treble. They, they persist. So if you're a member of the MSBA, you'll be, even if you're not connected to the other members of MSBA, since you're part of the organization, you can see other members' profiles. You can connect to them. You can see their wishes. They can see your wishes, things like that. Uh, next up is Will. Well, if you want to unmute. Will, are you there? One second, my apologies. I am currently addressing a slight crisis as I'm the SBA president at University of Baltimore. I'm working on a bunch of things right now. So I've been multitasking at this moment. No Could problem. you explain what I'm supposed to say? Sure, so um, in about 45 seconds, plus or minus, uh, answer three questions. What is your, bra what is your background? How can you help others? How can others help you? Ooh, good question. All right, so mm -hmm. I am not formally in the legal field unless you count working in the legislature for three years in Wisconsin as credible legal experience. I believe I can help other people by being a point of contact through the SBA. I'm the SBA president at University of Baltimore. I am able to communicate and work with both my administration and my students. And the ways I can be helped or people can reach out and help me is to bring me problems and issues they see between students and faculty and also students about to enter the legal field. There's different concerns than when people have already entered the legal field. There's always a changing dynamic. So that's one way I can help others is by having people come to me with those problems. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Nate, are you ready? Sure, why not? Uh, my name's Nate Risch. I've got a civil trial practice in Towson and do a lot of the type of work that your typical citizen community person runs into when they 
need a lawyer. Um, some domestic, some personal injury, business disputes, uh, things of that nature. It's a pretty wide berth. I've got a partner that does the criminal law, and between the two of us, we can tackle most of your small problems. I am the soon-to-be former chair of the Young Lawyers Section of the Maryland State Bar Association, and uh, I've been barred since 2006, so I'm soon not to be a young lawyer either, And uh, but it has been fun. What I can offer is a wealth of experience with this and a couple of the local bar associations, as well as networking contacts and trying to hook people up with somebody in their particular field, whether it's for a conversation or potentially for something more serious. Uh, what I'm looking for is to meet more people. Uh, one of the things that I found in my type of practice, the best referral source is a professional referral and lawyers referring clients that are looking for something outside of their specialty um, or outside of their, their field of uh, focus is where you can generate and the most business. Um, and so that's something that I'm certainly looking for. And I'm kind of like Hudak. I'm a bar rat. I like uh, helping people. And that gives me a sense of, you know, giving back for the people that gave their time before me. Just so everyone knows that, um, you know, what Nate's saying is true. I just referred him to um, someone the other day. So awesome. Right. awesome. Great success. That's, that's, we'd love to hear it. Hey, Zoe, did I skip over you? Yes, I can go. Okay. Um, so I'm Zoe. I'm a uh, rising 2L at the University of Maryland Carey Law School, and I'm currently one of the summer interns at the MSBA. Um, I am originally from upstate New York. So um, in terms of, I guess I'll do my, my wish, um, I would just like to make more connections with people in the state of Maryland because uh, this is only, I've only been here for one full year so far, and I would like to stay here after law school as well. Um, I'm interested in environmental law, so making connections in that field as well. Um, what I can offer, I really like to help people as well. I am currently a peer orientation advisor for future our, our incoming 1L students, and I'm also a, um, a legal writing fellow, so I'll be helping um, 1L students in their writing classes as well. So I kind of I like to be really involved and just help the people again who are, you know, coming up and I, if I can offer any experience and things to them as well. Great. Awesome. Um, Shally, would you like to give your shot? Sure. Thanks, David. Um, a little bit of background about me. I'm here at the MSBA as director of member experience and programs. Um, and I started earlier this year. Prior to that, I spent about a decade uh, serving as a family law litigator in the nonprofit and private sector and doing some appellate and legislative advocacy as well. And in ways that I can help others, similar to what Anna said, uh, working at Connecting You, if you'd like to have a speaking engagement, do a publication, put on programming, happy to connect you and promote, promote what you're working on. And for what I'm looking for, uh, is always looking to add any sort of additional member benefits or anything to the MSBA portfolio that's going to help our membership and our students. And in addition, I'm always looking for feedback, you know, what's working for you, what isn't, where do you see a void and a need for further service and benefits. Thank you. Great. Great. And don't forget, if you have some success after tonight, if somebody helps you, you make a connection, they refer business to you or offer advice, et cetera, uh, Shally, Angela, uh, the, the MSBA uh, leadership would love to hear some of those sex success stories and maybe who knows it gets you know promulgated out. Uh, Angela, are you ready? Sure, thanks David. Uh, my name is Angela Monroe. I've been with the MSBA for 13 years uh, in October. I am the section and committee administrator. Um, I don't have any of my wishes filled out. However, I'm always looking for law students and recent grads interested in becoming more active with sections. Um, please, feel, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'm here to help uh, students, attorneys, whomever who wants to get involved. Um, I can help with the, with the connections. Um, I know, Candace, you said you're interested in states and trusts. I can do a virtual introduction tomorrow with you and the incoming chair, um, along with Pranita and Margaret. So we can work on that this week. I think that was me. I think Candace had text. Sorry. 
<laughs> that's why you, that's why you guys have to write. That's right. I know. I have to write it down. I like both yeah. of them. That's why you have to have it in treble. I mean, literally, you know, keep the pad and you know, take the notes and all this. And, and it's kind of funny. I'll, I'll share with you. In in early in my career, I I was a mathematician. I was I, I had a really tremendous memory. I can remember everything about everybody. And now it's faded quite a bit. Um, but since then, I've had to write everything down. So that's what trebles for, be able to look back. I think I covered everybody, but the new gentleman joined, uh, John Anderson. John, can you hear us? Hey, how are y'all doing today? Good. So what we're doing, John, is since I think you missed everything, is we're doing uh, 45 seconds to answer three questions. What is your background? How can you help others? And what do you need? How can others help you? Okay. Uh, background, did you be law? after I did the Marine Corps, um, helping others. So we um, always looking to get others uh, involved in and stay involved as well. Um, I, I've met Angela several times at different places and, and other professors, Dean Feo at the school. So I, I know I like to try to keep everyone as involved as possible. And then what was that last one again? Uh, what do you need? How can others help you? Uh, me, I could use a vacation since I just got sworn in. Uh, that's pretty, it's been pretty crazy so far, especially with COVID. But no, um, right now others helping, it's, uh, just stay the course for the most part for, for everyone. It's, um, um I've already got a, a job and, and whatnot, a career, uh, lined up, but, um, you know, others, you know, I'm, I'm more or less ready to help others. So. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, John. So did I leave anybody out? I think I got everybody this time. Um, miss anybody or good to go so I'll, I'll leave everybody with just again reminder if you want to participate in treble feel free post your profile uh, background wishes um, take some time to reach out to people um, even if there's no immediate need for you or immediate you now have a little bit of a sample of all the different people that were on this call good opportunity to reach out and say hey I heard you talk about such and such that's really great what what are your aspirations or you know stay in touch we'd love to help you down the road this is the opportunity to really have a good excuse to make these connections and try to build a, a more cohesive and altruistic community because you never know when you need that person or they need you or they can refer business to you or vice versa so with that I'll throw it back to Shelly uh, any any other comments that you want to make Shelly Thank you so much, David. I think this was really wonderful. And if people haven't joined Treble, uh, encourage you to just join it because it really opens up an opportunity, another opportunity and another way to connect with, uh, with your peers. And I know there's so many virtual ways to do it, but it's, it's really specific. And I think it can um, do a lot for you very quickly. I think we just saw that right now with the way Angela facilitated um, some introductions and also from what Mike and Nate were saying. I think there's a, a lot of really good opportunities here. Um, in the last couple of minutes that we have, I think it would be great to turn to our student ambassadors again um, and maybe even our law clerks, our interns here at the MSBA to just share a little bit about how you're feeling, maybe some concerns or issues that you've heard from your peers. What's, you know, what's at the forefront and what are some positives that are coming out of this and what are you looking for in terms of support? So maybe Candace, could we start with you? Sure. Um, so my internship over the summer was with Council Baradell and it got rescinded because of COVID. Um, so unfortunately I wasn't able to take advantage of the op that opportunity to explore different types of practice areas. Um, However, I signed up with the tax clinic over the summer through University of Baltimore. I did tax clinic during spring semester, so doing it over the summer didn't seem like it would be horrible. It's not, but I'm having a lot of experience with clients because I currently manage around 30 clients um, by myself. Um, I mean, we meet with the supervising attorneys um, more than once a week, but it's basically all on me for those clients. So I'm getting a lot of client experience um, in doing stuff independently. As far as support, um, I think not, I mean, yes, for me and for two L's and three L's, but definitely for the, the rising two L's who were supposed to have jobs over this summer who don't, um, I think it would be really great if we could set up a mentoring 
program where each of those students would have a mentor. Um, because I know like my first year, I interned with Judge Avery and she has been instrumental in me uh, preparing for finding a job and going through law school. And she's been a mentor to me. And I think that many law students have missed out on having that connection on top of missing out on creating or gaining any type of skills your first year. So if the MSBA would be willing to pair with like University of Maryland or University of Baltimore and sort of create a system where those students could have a mentor in a field that they think they might be interested in, that would be really great. Um, but other than that, outside of law school, um, it's been really great for my health. I have not been um, super stressed out. I've been working out like every day and I've, I've actually lost 20 pounds since being in quarantine. I've made a lifestyle change um, because I was living off of candy and coffee every day. So it's been really great for me. Um, other than that, I don't know what else to say for students, but I think mentoring would be the support um, that they're looking for right now. Thank you, Candace. That's so good to hear that you're able to focus some time and energy to kind of coming back to yourself. Um, and I think that that's so important. And I know friends of mine in the legal community that have had that experience. And I think others are still in that fight or flight. I'm trying to figure this out. So I think the more that we can share with, with each other, you know, what kind of practices we're doing and how we're trying to schedule our day, I feel like that's wonderful. Um, and for the mentorship piece, uh, that's something that Angela and I spoke to um, Alyssa about recently, and it's something that we're going to work on developing. So, so definitely stay tuned. And in the meantime, a lot of great support here, as you heard from Lisa Sparks and um, Nate and some other people that were on the call but had to hop off. I mean, everybody's available for, for any kind of support. Um, and then I think we've got Pernita and Zoe. Yep. Um, if you all have any other thoughts, and Margaret, um, we've got a few more minutes if you want to share. Well, I'll jump in really quick. I just want to say, so for every pound Candace lost, I found. So I gained 14 pounds in COVID. <laughs> That's beside the point. But yeah, I, I definitely agree with Candace. But um, also, I'd like to add, again, you know, as a non-traditional student, I'm an evening student and it's second career. So I think sometimes the evening students feel like the stepchildren of UB or, or of law school in general. And so in addition to, um, you know, what Candace mentioned, maybe if there was an opportunity to help guide people who already had a career but are making a transition that is not necessarily a smooth one. Um, although I'm coming from a healthcare background, I entered law school, you know, with healthcare on my mind. But since I got there, my head has been on a swivel and every class has changed my idea of what I want to practice. And so I, I'm, I feel like, okay, I'm 40 and I don't know where I'm going, you know. And so I don't find that a lot of the resources are kind of geared towards either the adult, you know, more adult student or second career student. Um, even as a quote young lawyer, I'm not necessarily young, but I would be a, a new a new lawyer. Um, I just think maybe if some opportunities there to help with guidance, um, you know, for students who are worried about it's my second career. I don't have the, you know, I may not have the years to take you know, two and three and four jobs before I find the perfect job. So I think that might be an additional area. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Zoe, do you wanna share any thoughts? Yeah, I'll go. Um, I think from me and a lot of the people I've been speaking to who I go to law school with, I think we're all just really concerned about what the future of school kind of looks like and what online learning really means. I mean, we got a taste of it last semester, um, but I think a lot of people found it very hard to pay attention online, you know, being in spaces where you had a lot of distractions. So just kind of talking about how that will be and if we'll have any in-person opportunities, I'm going to be taking a clinic next year. So how that's going to look, because um, that's not going to be a traditional kind of experience. Um, and I think just trying to find ways that we stay connected with each other. You know, we're all so used to coming into school and seeing each other and being able to find that comfort in people who understand, you know, what we're going through as law students and the struggles. Um, so just kind of trying to keep touch with people, everyone that 
we, we are used to seeing but not always talking to outside of classes, so. Great, thank you, Zoe. Um, anyone else wanna share any thoughts? I'll just say, um, so Alyssa, I just want to thank you all um, so much for putting this on for our students and I'm so glad to hear that it's going to be recorded. Um, I had hoped that more students would take advantage of it and I think that, you know, it's that balance that they're trying to figure out about all the information coming at them and being online all the time and, and that's only going to, that's going to continue. Um, and so um, I think knowing that, that MSBA is there and that you are willing to um, connect students, that's, that's so much, um, and that support means so much to, to both, I'm sure, University of Maryland and to UB Law, so thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, so many thanks to all of you for, for staying on and joining, and um, as we said, this is recorded, so we will share it, um, and we certainly are not ending the conversation here. I think we're just gonna keep continuing it online and hopefully in more virtual and in-person spaces. Um, I think one of our members mentioned we are not doing in-person events um, until September 1st, uh, but we are still planning for events and spaces to gather after that later this year. So please stay tuned um, and please be well and many thanks to all of you for joining us.